it's Renee Tailspin Farm. I am a crocheter, hand spinner, knitter. I toy with dyeing a little bit. Um, and I raise Angor rabbits. Um, and so I wanted to pop on. I know there's been quite a few new subscribers to the channel lately, so I wanted to give a little heads up as to who I am and why I have this YouTube channel. Um, I essentially started it last year in order to do some more creative stuff um, and to um, give information about raising angoras and spinning their, or their fiber into yarn and um, just to give people information. I like, I like to teach people new things and so that's one of the, uh, the things that I like to do. Um, and today I am popping on, I thought I'd do a quick little video. I've done one of these before. Um, last video I talked about how I got started in Angora Rabbits and why I got started in Angora Rabbits. Um, if I remember, I'll link that below, but if not, I don't have that many videos yet, so you can find it. Um, as to how I got started in the world of spinning fiber off from rabbits, um, and I raise both English and French Angoras right now. Um, and I wanted to show you a few things that you can do with their fiber. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, I almost did not start raising Angora rabbits because at that time, it was like 15, 16 years ago, the internet was a new thing. Um, I don't even think YouTube was a thing. And so I went off websites of people who raised them. And a lot of the people said that you cannot spin 100% Angora yarn. Um, and they're difficult and, you know, there's a lot of effort that goes into them. Um, and I think that's true with any animal that you're raising. We've raised alpacas and we've raised pygora goats. Um, and I think with any any animal that you raise, there is a lot of effort that goes into them. Yes, you do have to stay up on the grooming maintenance of angora rabbits, um, but it doesn't have to be a crazy schedule where you're doing it every day. At least I do not. Um, I keep them, I keep cages cleaned and I keep them groomed. Um, try to keep them groomed every week or two, um, but there are even times when I don't. And typically in the summer, I shear mine down. So um, most of summer, I don't have to worry about combing them, um, which is how I typically get my fiber to spin. Um, but I wanted to hop on today to show you what I do with 100% hand spun Angora. Now keep in mind, when you do spin 100% Angora, it doesn't have... Um, the elasticity or the the spring back that most fibers have it's it's very drapey which can make some stuff really beautiful but on the same um, in the same way it makes some really beautiful things most of my yarn is two ply um, and I have come up with a few ways another thing with Angora is it's really really warm and so you wouldn't necessarily make an entire sweater out of Angora, um, although you could, and they do. And But it is, just keep in mind, it's they say it's about seven, eight times warmer than wool. And so it is extremely warm. And I have over the years tried to come up with ways to make it more usable so that I could um, just wear it all the time, and I do. Um, so some of the ways that I've done that is I have created jewelry out of it. And so um, I have made, and obviously I don't have blue rabbits, um, but I make cuff bracelets. Uh, let's see, yep. So you can see this one does have a pattern, but then you can see the halo. Um, I dyed this one. This one is actually one that I wore. I made a whole set for my son's wedding. Um, and so this was one piece that I wore. I had earrings and a necklace that went with this. Um, and so I make bracelets. I love making bracelets out of Angora. And so that's one of the things that I do with my Angora so I can wear it year round. Um, and I have quite a few different ones that I like to make. Ooh, this one goes with my outfit today. Um, but again, this is just a cuff bracelet with like a wooden button on it. And they just slide on um, out of my ring. And they, this one, they just kind of fit 
and they really, really look pretty on. Um, so I have a few different styles. I have antique buttons that I like to collect and put on some of them. Um, this is another, I like to use, it's like a, a medallion, circle medallion um, design that I have that I like to use. Here's, here is a white, white one. Um, so there are lots, and the crocheted, the difference between the crocheted and the knit um, makes the bracelets look different too. You can see this one here um, is crocheted, this one is knit in the round. Um, so just, it gives you different looks, but when you wear these, the more you wear them, um, the more of the halo that you're going to get from them. So that's kind of, and again, I have all kinds of different, you can get these metal pieces, um, the wooden buttons you can get like at Hobby Lobby or Joann's. I like these ones a lot. I just think it makes it really cute and different. So I like to make those and sell those. Um, and again, they're really easy. They're comfortable to wear. Angora's super lightweight and soft. Um, so when you wear them as a bracelet, you don't, you don't really feel it. It's not jingly or, you know, it's just there. Um, the other thing that I make are, this is a necklace. Um, and it just, it slides over and it just, it's beaded. And I've spun this, I've art spun the yarn and then created the necklace out of that. Um, and this is just a piece that I knit or crocheted around um, to make the whole necklace. So I like doing that with it. Um, another jewelry thing that I like to do with these is make earrings. Um, there's a couple of different ways that I do that. Um, one of them is just a simple, let's see, there we go. Simple circles. I add some beads to it. Um, and those are gonna really lightweight. I have just rings that I add it to. Um, one of my favorites right now, of course, we're in the middle of fall here in Michigan, um, and I love fall. It's my favorite time of the year, and our leaves are turning and falling. So I designed these leaf earrings, um, and they're really cute. And it's kind of a way to, let's see if I can get that straight. You can wear fur year round <laughs> and it's not too hot. Um, it's just a really unique look. Now, a couple of the other ways that I use my Angora, um, I do have, and I don't, I didn't bring it today or I don't have it here today, um, but I have a 100% Angora hats. I have a couple of them, um, but this one I have, and again, this one is dyed. Um, this, the dyed part, the teal, is actually Pygora, but the white is natural Angora that I put in, so you can add it to other fibers or other yarns to make just an accent, and you can see as this gets worn, it will, you'll get the halo effect, um, and so that's a nice way to use 100% Angora. Um, this one is a really cool way. I actually did not make these. My mother-in-law made these for me. She designed them but I made the yarn for them. So these are boots, and I love these boots. Um, she created and designed these, and actually, if you go to my Etsy store, I think the pattern might still be there for these. She came up with a way, but I made the yarn for this, and she put it into this boot cuff. And I just, I love these. I've had these probably for five or six years now, and I still wear them all the time, and you can see um, it's just a really cool, unique look for boots. And it's that's 100% Angora on the cuffs. And they're short enough um, where they do stay up on my, on my legs. They don't slouch or fall. Um, and so those are another way to use it. And again, this is a two-ply. Um, and the last thing I brought to show you today, or that I'm going to show you, is just a... It's a scarf. Um, I took I took a part of a pattern and cut it down 
and made this into like a, sh a scarf. It's essentially, it would be a shawl if I made it bigger, but I wanted something that I could wear with t-shirts like in the spring even. And so this is all 100% Angora and I love this. And again, it has a really awesome drape to it. Um, this one I created so you can wear it either way. You can wear it to the back and I just have buttons. And if you hear my husband yelling for me, I can hear he just walked in the door. Um, and I have buttons that I put here so you could wear it um, either way. It could go towards the front with the, with the shawl part to the back or I usually wear it like this with a t-shirt and I can wear this into, you know, into the spring even. It's not too heavy, it's light enough, and it's not, not too warm. Um, so I love this one. And again, this is all 100% two-ply Angora. And you can see I've worn this enough that I have oh, a lot of, okay, never a dull moment around here. I don't know if that part will get cut off, but that was my husband. Um, so those are the things that I make with my 100% Angora. And again, I love using it. I love spinning it. Um, a lot of people say it's hard to spin. I have been doing it. That's what I started on. I started on a drop spindle with Angora. And that's mainly what I spin now. And I've just been doing it for so long that, um, that I don't know. I just, I love the, the feel of it. It's so soft. And so I hope that helps with some of the questions. Um, if you want to follow me, I am on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, and obviously here on YouTube under Tailspin Farm. Um, if you have any ideas for videos that you would like to see, I know people have been asking a lot of rabbit questions lately. Um, if you have any ideas for videos, you can pop those in the comments down below. Um, if you would, please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to do more videos um, and hopefully giving people more information about spinning and, and rabbits and angora yarn. And so I hope that you will do that for me. Again, if you have any questions, you can message me. Um, and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.